Hey internet friends, I feel like I woke up in some distorted nightmare world and the iconic quirky scientist from my school years is no longer Bill Nye the science guy. Now he's more like Bill Nye the pandering guy. Although I'm sure that Bill Nye's actions and views have little to no effect on actual scientific opinion. However, as a TV personality who has established a sense of trust between his brand and his young viewers, who are now adults, Bill Nye certainly has the ability to influence public opinion, which is why I'm bringing him up now. Science used to be about questioning everything, but now I feel like we just accept things and move on. So let's put a magnifying glass on the history of the internet's favorite scientist so we can hypothesize what's going on with him right now. I'm not going to hone in on every eyebrow raising tidbit. This is a choose your own adventure sort of video. So here we go. Please consider the following. William Sanford Nye or Bill Nye was born in Washington DC in 1955, Bill Nye's mother was so adept at math and science that she was recruited to become a Navy cryptographer during World War II, working to crack the infamous Nazi Enigma code. I wonder what she would think of her son attempting to get into the astronaut program at NASA, since after the war, much of the German hierarchy was recruited to come to the USA and adopted to mastermind NASA. All of that is outlined in my Operation Paperclip video. Anywho, back to our science guy's childhood. He attended Sidwell Friends School, known as the Harvard of Washington's private schools where the children of many US presidents attended. I'm really intrigued if anyone knows who his classmates were. Bill went on to get a degree in mechanical engineering, then he moved to Seattle and worked for Boeing. But then he hopped over to acting, doing his quirky yet educational experiments on the comedy show Almost Live. In 1992, Bill proposed an educational TV show for a preteen audience, which came to fruition in September of 1993. Each episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy focused on a specific scientific topic, using fun visuals, humor, and a thorough explanation. The proposed objective? Change the world. After the show's run, Bill tried his hand at a few more productions. He became the CEO of the Planetary Society and evolved into a passionate spokesperson for rallying against creationism being taught in public schools. Bill became a strong supporter of abortion and Planned Parenthood, a proponent of climate science and vaccines, and a denier of the idea of race. But Bill shifted his stance on a hot issue. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, which are prevalent in many crops, but most notably in beets, potatoes, corn, tomatoes, squash, soybeans, and animal feed. His former stance was that GMOs were not a great idea. In a book published in 2014, he said that scientists didn't have a clear picture of what GMOs could do to the ecosystem. But a few months later, Bill changed his tune after visiting Monsanto, a corporation known for genetically modifying agricultural products. The sudden shift in stance made people do a double take. Sure, people change their minds all the time. That's part of life. But Monsanto is responsible for Agent Orange, DDT, PCBs, and aspartame. The active ingredient in their most popular pesticide, Roundup, was discovered to be a carcinogenic as far back as 1981, and it's a direct reason for increased cancer rates around the world. In the same interview, Bill said, I went to Monsanto, and I spent a lot of time with a scientist there, and I have revised my outlook. I'm very excited about telling the world. When you're in love, you want to tell the world. At this point in my research, I started to notice a trend. The written objective of Bill Nye the Science Guy TV series was Change the World. His book released in 2014 was called Undeniable, Evolution in the Science of Creation. His book released in 2015 was called Unstoppable, Harnessing Science to Change the World. And finally, we arrive at his new series on Netflix, 
called Bill Nye Saves the World. Fun fact, did you know that billionaire investor and self-proclaimed Jewish Nazi George Soros holds $13 million worth of shares in Netflix? And Soros bought almost 900,000 Monsanto shares in 2010. I wonder if those under the Soros banner have any say in which shows are aired on Netflix. Because Bill Nye Saves the World might be the most propaganda-laden thing I've ever seen. The show is targeted at an adult audience, addressing topics from a scientific point of view, refuting myths and claims that rebuke science. Familiar faces like model Carly Kloss appear on the show, alongside YouTuber Joanna Hossman. Curiously, Carly is currently dating Joshua Kushner, brother of Jared Kushner, owner of 666, Fifth Avenue, an inhabitant of the White House alongside father-in-law, President Donald Trump. Bill's new show is produced by Bunham Murray Productions, which I'm going to call BMP from now on. It's most famously known for reality TV shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, MTV's Real World, and even Howard Stern's show as well as the documentary Autism, the musical, which follows the lives of five children who are on the autism spectrum. BMP was founded by Mary Ellis Bunham and Jonathan Murray. Mary Ellis died in 2004 from breast cancer, but her daughter Juliana works at the University of California, San Francisco's Medical Center and Children's Hospital. And gee, she's published some really interesting articles on the benefits of vaccinations, autism studies, and the connection to sugar and obesity in children. But I'm not noticing any studies on the dangers of aspartame. Hopping over to the other founder, whose name is Jonathan, I noticed that he and his partner Harvey had adopted a son and his name is Dylan Murray and he's a pop star. And then there's the chairman and CEO of BMP, Goldshin, Gil Goldshin, who's responsible for producing I Am Kate. Following the transition from Bruce to Caitlyn Jenner, now that we've got all of that out of the way, my first exposure to Bill Nye Saves the World was a clip called my sex junk, featuring Rachel Bloom. I knew she looked familiar, but I couldn't quite place her. But then I realized she had a viral YouTube video a few years ago where she starred in a sexy music video that takes place inside the mind of a 12-year-old boy after he falls asleep in Hebrew school. Comment below if you can read my mind right now. And before I get to the clip of my sex junk, I wanted to address anyone who identifies as anything other than straight. Does it bother you that hypersexuality is always the lens the media uses to focus on you? Do you find these depictions offensive since they're basically making a mockery out of your lifestyle? You're more than your sex junk, right? Last time I checked, we're, we were all people, not objects. This segment, which I encourage you to watch if you want to share in my thinly veiled outrage, has to be one of the worst things I've ever seen on YouTube. I wish I could play the entire clip for you, but I'll get smacked off of YouTube for copyright. I assume the point of this episode is to reinforce the notion that there are an unlimited number of genders and to cherish the diversity and explore your curiosity. The people who star in this episode are enlightened and forward thinking and everyone who disagrees with them is a bigot. There are so many problems with this, I don't, I don't even know where to start. First, Bill Nye starts off by assuming my gender. How dare he? And then Rachel begins talking about her vagina, then sings about how she will have sex with anyone, then recommends those kinds of activities with strangers, all while Bill Nye is off to the side rocking out. I mean, he's jamming over there. The song ends as she tells close-minded folk to get off their soapbox. Bill pulls it all together at the end by saying, it was exactly the right message. There was so much science in that performance that I could hardly comprehend it. I believe in the same episode, an ice cream cone animation was used to demonstrate close-mindedness on sexuality, citing a heterosexual person as vanilla. But by the end, after praying to God, the vanilla cone was licking all the other flavors in one giant sundae bowl. And at some point, Bill Nye stated that three-year-olds could determine their own gender. Should children be worried about that kind of stuff? 
stuff. When you were three, did you question whether you were a boy or a girl? In other episodes, Bill Nye interviews Monsanto executives. He talks about why vaccines are necessary and takes on climate change deniers, debunks homeopathy, interviews NASA scientists, and pokes fun at chemtrails. I say all of this for a reason. While we all know Bill Nye as the science guy, at the end of the day, he's an actor. And while you could make the argument that his new propaganda machine of a show is just one example of selective science being used as a political move to silence an opposing argument, I would argue that, based on the information I've provided, it might suggest that the propaganda machine had its eyes on Bill Nye before he ever was our science guy. And it's almost like they are rolling out this propaganda just as the kids who watch Bill Nye at public school are reaching voting age and thinking about starting families. Think again, y'all. What's wrong? Don't you like science? Please let me know what you think. And as always, I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Bye.